right, I think we should get started uh, because there's only like 30 minutes and then we have a packed agenda today. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to how do we conquer the social content. Social media content is always like high volume. And then especially if you're running an agency, working for an agency, creating content for multiple brands, that adds up. There is a mountain full of like content that we got to get created. So just let's uh, see how AI can help today. And then what are the things that we want to watch for? What are the things that we can use? And then because everyone is aware of the AI language at this point and then whether we want to use it how do we want to use it what are the carefully things that we, we should be working on okay. uh welcome again to everyone my name is Pushpa Ithal. i'm the ceo of market beam we are in here in uh, silicon valley san francisco bay area and we are a social media publishing and amplification platform we recently integrated with chat gpd4 and then that's how we learned a lot in this process and then we I definitely want to like you know share that with all of you who are creating content on a daily basis so uh, a few things here just like you know some of you asked these questions I mean we didn't add all the questions here so the gist of it let's just go through a couple of them how to create client-centric content a client-centric content and that is like you know satisfaction and I think like you know again some of you are running agencies or working for agencies and creating content for multiple brands to boost your agency's success. Um, and others are asking how to apply AI content to social media creation. That definitely we're going to go through that today. And chat GPT prompts for marketing copywriting. And how do we tweak that to content to being original? So that's also a pretty good question. And then some of you are asking about privacy issues. So we go a little bit deeper into that, but we cannot completely cover the privacy issues. There are, first of all, that's pretty nascent at this point. And uh, there are things that are already out there and people are discussing. So to this, I want to add my question, right? So the GPT words that are like, you know, when you create, if you are already creating content, so there are some words that are repetitive in the content that GPT creates in today's connected world or however, moreover. So these are words that we don't usually typically use in, but GPT uses that a lot. And then harnessing the power of, in conclusion, the future of. So these are just words to like, you know, that are already people noticing. And then if you start your content with any of these, they start looking at, okay, is it AI created? Is it like, you know, was there any other thoughts that are put into this? So I would add to my, my own question list here is how do we like, you know, detect and then kind of like, you know, avoid this? How can we avoid these pitfalls? So uh, among the people here, I want to see how many of you are already using AI? for your content creation. Uh, if you're using, if you're not using, or if you don't want to disclose it because you're an agency, that's fine too. So please let me know. Looks like 80% of you are using 20% not yet. So that's that's a good split because I think there is, there are people that are still debating whether to use it or not for various reasons. Either they're not, um, okay, it, 83% and 17% no. Okay, so there are some companies that are still evaluating and then how it works out for them. So thanks for answering. So I think a huge percentage of you here already have used or using it consistently so you know what to watch for. So just some uh, marketing statistics here, right? So stats, uh, over six hours, people spend over six hours a week kind of creating content, it's very, very typical. And 61% of marketers find content creation and production on top of the challenges. So that's also, I think we can now like, you know, tell there is writer's block and human errors. There are so many things, again, like, you know, high volume, right? So it's high volume. And then also we need high quality every day in our content. So and then 47% of consumers unfollow brands because it's not relevant. So 
sometimes with lack of creativity on a daily basis, we tend to create content that may not be super relevant. And then that's not going to give us enough engagement or ROI. And of course, like, you know, when it comes to social media content uh, and then the platforms themselves, of course, there's a huge B2B um, population in LinkedIn and then next comes Twitter, but it might even be dated. Probably like, you know, we don't have the stats on threads yet. So some of the challenges that we see with especially agencies, we also work with agencies. We are a product company, but many agencies use our product to create content for their own brands and multiple brands, right? So multiple brands. So major challenges that they see is personalization and relevance because every brand they need, if, the, if you are managing even five brands, you need to understand five different industries five different brands, what there was and what their audience, what social networks they're popular in, and then how do you communicate to that? That's a lot of uh, just research work, intelligence, and then also like, you know, skills in that industry. That's a lot that's that needs to be like, you know, fed into the training of every content writer, which adds up cost. And then also it takes too long. So time and resources, yes, we all want to do that brand voice and adapting to algorithm changes. That's the hardest, hardest one for every social network when you're working on it. There are changes in algorithms and we need to be changing too in order to catch up. Like, you know, what are the number of hashtags that you want to have? Is it five? Is it 10, 15? What is the right number? And these things change as well over a period of time. And then compliance and legal issues. So this is... This is not very prominent at this point, but it might be because there are no rules in any of the industry yet to use or not to use AI for their content creation. But at the same time, everyone is also speculating, many industries, is that what, what happens to their SEO? So is Google or Bing going to detect and then penalize what that has not happened yet? So that's why there are a few things that we want to do to avoid those. Even in the future, the content that you're writing now should also have a life and engagement in the future if those things come into picture. And then centralized content system, um, that kind of like boils down to the tools that are using. So if you are using GPT's UI itself and then transferring that into another tool, and again, like, you know, like managing it there and making edits either in GPT or in your own tool for your social media content. So it is kind of like, you know, there are two things that you need to use. It sometimes it takes away the time that you are saving um, because of that. So I, again, like, you know, I want to know a little bit more about what challenges that you think you're facing and then what are top of the priority for you guys. Again, consistent brand voice is a really hard one to achieve and with the AI as well, because that needs to have context. And then of course, like, you know, we have you know, time and then resources and uh, just training writers. So training writers, going back to my point about just knowing the industry. And then if you're managing multiple brands, it's hard to train new resources and you don't even find resources that can be flexible. And then uh, no integrated AI tool. So that is becoming a challenge in just the work uh, that you are spending here too. So time is the top answer. Thanks for answering the poll here. Time is the top answer. Uh, no, it's changing. I'll wait. Okay, consistent brand voice is the top challenge. So, and then a lot of you also said time is a, is a pretty uh, big challenge. 71% of you said time is a top challenge, consistent brand voice. Those are the two ones. And then when it comes to resources and then training writers is at the bottom. So that's actually really good. But I think like, you know, we can solve these things, the consistent brand voice and then the time thing. Thanks for answering. Let's go here. So there are a lot of... Um, choices for you to use GPT-4. And then today we'll be focusing on social media copy alone. And it's all about the prompts. So we've been talking about prompts and the prompt engineering. 
And then I recently heard that people don't want to call it prompt engineering, prompt skill, and you know many terminologies around that, but prompt engineering has been the most popular out there today. So when we work with the API of GPT, so we can understand a lot more. That means what it exactly, like, you know, how they prioritize the input that they get, what type of input uh, should be given, first of all, right? So starting from setting a role. So setting a role is a very, very key thing in the API. So when you do not set a role, even when you're using GPT directly from the UI, that's going to give a completely different result. Like for example, you are a brand manager or you're a thought leader or you're like, you know, um, a VP marketing of a company. So whatever that is, or more details you give, like for example, I'm a B2B marketer for a cybersecurity company. So that's even more detailed about like, you know, what you are looking to write. So setting a role is very, very critical. So you are a brand manager. So we'll, at the end of it, we'll just type this on chat GPT right in this call, and then we'll see how it works, okay? So the next thing is setting the character length. So if you do not set the character length when while you are creating a social media post, it's gonna be very lengthy. And when GPT does not have enough context, it tries to fill fluff words. That's when it just goes back and then writes all those things in the world of and however in conclusion and all these things because it needs to write a certain length, but it does not have enough context. So limit that with the number of characters that you see. So what we've seen for uh, LinkedIn right now, what it works uh, based on our database is around 300 to 400, but there are many caveats to it. If you want to uh, get a copy of our research on just the social media, especially LinkedIn character land, just drop your email here in the chat. We'll be able to send that to you. Uh, it's a white paper based on our own research and uh, the database research and then also algorithm research. And you are a brand manager, write a 300 character LinkedIn post. So we're adding to that, right? And then the next thing is the topic itself. What are you doing, right? You know, promoting an event, promoting a blog post, or like, you know, very specifically, are you welcoming your VP marketing? So these things you definitely like, you know, want to add what the context is. And we are adding that, right? So, and then promote this blog post, we write, put this whole entire URL there. So thinking that we would give context. And also control your hashtags and emojis. If you do not add how many emojis you want or you don't want, it's going to give poor with emojis at this point. So still like GPT is learning from AI, whether people want to use emojis or not, but it's going to be like very irrelevant images is what we've seen. And then it's not adding value to the content and it's even distraction because it adds a lot of emojis inside the text itself. So, and then the number of hashtags too. So we have found five hashtags is the best. You gotta have five hashtags. That's the optimum number of hashtags, but you can of course like, you know, go fewer or uh, higher a little bit. And emojis too include, should not include emojis. So let's take this one. You are a brand manager, write a 300 character LinkedIn post, promote this blog post. We just dumped the whole URL here add five hashtags and no emojis. So let's go to GPT and then try this. I have this written here, you're a brand manager. And by the way, this is the article that we are promoting. It's an Amazon article about like, you know, people getting some cash back here. So it has something okay so we are able to control the hashtags all right explore our latest blog discussing how amazon is revolutionizing delivery so again this word revolutionizing so just keep track of this because people already know that these words are very gpt based words if you want to like you know make sure that it is personalized and they're not gpt based and then make sure you use don't use that revolutionizing delivery by incentivizing customer to pick up packages. Okay, so this is 
this looks all right, but this does not have enough context into like, you know, what this is, this very detailed uh, blog post here. And then just to compare it, this is market beams, you user interface. And uh, what we do is just drop in this URL. And I would say compose, probably just, you know, promote this blog post. And I don't have to write anything, setting the rules, setting the role or hashtags or like, you know, the number of characters, everything is actually like, you know, done by the layered here, the, the prompt engineering. So we'll see what type of uh, information it gives. The basic difference between just go directly going into GPT and then what we've built here is, um, let me just see here. So there is this whole content on the destination page that's already written is what we usually promote on social posts. This context is missing for GPT because it does not have access to your page, does not have a capability to read it, no connection to the internet. So what Market Beam produced here is fantastic news for Market Beam, sorry, Amazon Prime subscribers. Amazon is incentivizing customers with $10 to retrieve their purchases of $25 or more. So that means it's going into the specifics of it. So this is higher quality content because instead of like, you know, comparing it at a very high level, delivering, incentivizing customers. So it's very high level. Fantastic news. Okay, probably this looks, if it looks a little bit cheesy, then you can just edit it, delete it. But everything else is very high quality ones because lower delivery costs is an innovative step forward in e-commerce. And then the, even the hashtags, Amazon Prime customer experience, e-commerce strategy and pickup points. So here it was able to get a couple of them pick up points, no, not really delivery innovation. It's not really innovation, it's just a promotion. So why did we get this result? Also like Twitter will you know, have a different text. That's another thing that we all struggle with is we've seen many, 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 even larger companies have a lot of resources. They have the same text on LinkedIn and the same text on Twitter. That does not mean that actually both audiences consume the same level of content. So here Amazon is giving this, it's very crisp and hashtags are also different many times. So, so we, why did, why were we able to like create this inside market beam? Um, and then not on GPT, again, the context, and then also um, the very meaning of like, you know, providing all that other things, the role and everything in that context it's already built in and then sent so role social network the url content which is missing and the number of characters and hashtags we put that all those things and then you get this quality quality content so how do we do that the prompts are tweaked for higher quality content right so then the user inputs are supplemented with the data backed prompt so other than this, we also have a hashtag analysis behind the scenes. So what does that mean? So more and more data as we collect, okay, these are engaging posts. And then what these engaging posts have in common, what hashtags do they have in common? And then there is an algorithm behind the scenes saying that, which is the most popular hashtags and then your brand should definitely have it. That context is missing on GPT because it's a chat based and it does not, I mean, it does remember the context in that chat only, but if you just go beyond that, it forgets the context, right? So a tool like, again, like, you know, I'm just like giving an example. If you find another tool, it's, uh, you can go find it. So, but in Market Beam, I can only speak for that. What kind of research we did is if you know what hashtags are performing better, and then we include that in creating the prompt itself so that you get higher quality that brand related um, content. So inputs from analytics, yeah, that's the one. One is the hashtag and number of hashtags and then basically the number of characters, which is a very popular uh, metric for us. And then it's a hard one to like, you know, see that. Let's say you have 20 or 30 posts to analyze and humanly, it is almost close to impossible to see what type of engagement each one of those posts get 
and what was the hashtag that was common and then what's the number of characters that's optimum for your post and your brand. So all these things are again, like, you know, machine-based analytics we have inside the product. And then once you start posting more and more and then AI on top of AI and machine learning, it actually understands those things and then gives that as an input. So your content creation becomes a lot more easier for your end, but it becomes a lot more qualitative and then complex um, because the API needs to have more context in order to bring more um, qualified things. So uh, I would actually like, you know, be open to taking any questions. If you have, uh, please go through that. And the, one of the other things we do as well is publishing is here. So when we create this content, the, the pages are already create, uh, connected and then you can po post it right away here. So that's the one I was talking about the tool. If you have a tool that's already integrated, the content creation and publishing, just use that tool. Otherwise you are going to be like spending anyway more time transferring from one tool to another. Here we are creating the content inside and also publishing. We also do employee amplification, which is just the, I call it the magic checkbox. That means everyone either in your brand's company that you're working with or your own, if you are creating content for your own brands, just asking your colleagues to reshare, that's also included everything in one workflow so that it's just like, you know, again, going, going back to most of you talking about the time saving. So that's where it actually like, you know, helps. Um, I would kind of like skip this video. This is, uh, I already showed this, showed this in, um, in my demo here. So if you have any questions, uh, ask away. Uh, you can use the Q&A here, but otherwise, for thanks for attending. And then we are actually giving away two weeks of free trial, free trial of the whatever you saw right now, Market Beams. You can create social media content, connect to a page, publish it, and right away, and then also see analytics on top of it. So see that in the chat, there is actually like, you know, um, a meeting link. If you want to give it a try, just like, you know, schedule a 15 minute call, that should be sufficient. You don't need a whole 30 minutes. So 15 minutes call and also like, you know, give your email. So we'll all be set up before you get onto the call. And then you'll be able to like, you know, have access to it and then see how to use it. Mm, go ahead. So, Pragya, can you please put the meeting in white here, please? The meeting link. All right. So, I'm just adding it right here. So, check the meeting link and then just schedule a 15 minute just a 15 minute call or a 30 minute call if you want to learn more about it. And we'll be say, we'll have your logins and we'll just like show you how to connect your pages, how to use the GPD part, and then you'll all be set. All right, so I do want to give uh, five minutes back to you. Thanks for again, like, you know, joining the call today. And then we are all here to do more research and then learn more about GPT. If you guys learn anything, please share it with us. It's a community effort at this point and then to learn more about the generative AIs. And for those of you who said that you want to give it a try, uh, it's a two week free trial, absolutely free trial. You're not asked to give any credit cards, nothing.